apparently Bell actually has a Gigahub 2.0 and it was leaked yesterday and it seems to be coming soon, but there's a bit to unpack here. And not only that, but there's a bigger problem at hand that if I'm being honest, I'm actually kind of sick of harping on. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. Right on the heels of the walkthrough on how to bypass the Gigahub and the Home Hub 4000, which by the way, I'll link those videos below and maybe on the end card of this video. But anyway, there's a leak. This showed up on Reddit yesterday. So obviously the poster hit a bunch of the background stuff, but let's see what we can figure out here. So we've got some ports on the rear through the second picture. So let's go through those ports. We have a pair of RJ11 ports, which is your standard for your telephone connections. You have a 10 gigabit ethernet port, a single port, a pair of 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, which is fairly interesting, a pair of gigabit ethernet ports, a power input. And if I'm being honest, most likely, this is probably a Wi-Fi 7 device. And if you look at the amount of antennas, this does kind of worry me a little because here's the thing, Wi-Fi 7 doesn't necessarily mean better coverage and it will be falsely advertised as better coverage. I promise you that's probably gonna happen. I actually don't need it because a very awesome commenter on the bypass video got me access to a Unify E7 access point, which I'm testing right now with my Cloud Gateway Fiber with the bypass setup. It's amazing so far. And I'm hoping to get that video up soon. But in the meantime, for those who have Wi-Fi 7, you know that the six gigahertz band and the channel width, it makes penetration in buildings a lot harder. So if Bell's not careful, they're gonna basically piss off more people than impress with this bolstering of Wi-Fi 7. And let's be completely real here. They're not gonna be careful. They're gonna go after the market of people who just don't know better. I got to debunk something I saw on Reddit. It was a comment and I saw a couple of comments about this in various places about the SFP. Look, here's the Home Hub 4000, okay? Which is identical essentially to the Giga Hub. You can't access the SFP, okay? I'm gonna cover up my serial number. This is state-of-the-art uh, protection of my um, credentials. But you'll notice you can't access it. So the way this one worked is this fiber port right here is just a coupler. And then the fiber goes in and it kind of loops around and then it's wired into uh, the internal SFP. If you look at the picture that I'm popping on screen right now, it's gonna be the same thing, okay? They're not gonna give us access. In efforts, by the way, and I, I need to disclose this, in efforts to protect people I know who work at Bell, uh, I already heard about this, but I wasn't gonna say anything because let me be completely frank with you, I'm not some kind of a journalist. And frankly speaking, look, we know how the internet is. Someone was going to leak it anyway. So I just figured I'd wait to talk about it. And the thing is, is that Bell does have a bigger issue at the moment. I'm going to talk about that in a second. While I can't comment on pricing or if it's like a free swap or an upgrade, because honestly, look, I have no idea. I can say that this is probably a reaction to a lot of people complaining about the poor Wi-Fi performance on the current Bell equipment. Look, tech enthusiasts, let me be honest with you, if you're into tinkering like myself, if you're into bypassing and doing all that stuff, we need to curb our expectations here. Because comments like a true bridge mode and a removable SFP and other terms, look, that's just not on Bell's radar. They're servicing a mass audience, most of which couldn't care less about those things. As a matter of fact, just don't expect the Gigahub, like the new one, to give you more freedom. That is gonna be the last thing they want. And this is why we, like the community, we tend to bypass our stuff, given how well, sarcasm, the Gigahub rollout went. I'm sure the new hardware is gonna be great. Also sarcasm. There is one issue that affects everybody, regardless if you're bypassed or not bypassed or whatever the case is. If you've had the Home Hub 4000 or the Gigahub installed and you saw this message, you know, error 2000 network authentication error. Here's a picture posted to Reddit by user Chicken Tender Defender. Sick name. <laughs> it's not limited to you. In the past, it was account issues causing this. Look at how many links come up when you search YouTube for Bell Error 2000. Speaking with a few people, it's becoming a wider spread issue and the network authentication is not the entire story. When your modem connects to Bell, it logs in with your credentials, kind of like your B1 that you would put in when you're doing PPPoE, but it's just all internal, right? Because everything's like, you know, it's all married to the device through like the serial number and all that stuff. And right when they're setting you up, that's what the Bell technician makes sure is all 
like authenticated and set up for you. But here's the problem. When your modem connects the bell, it logs in with the credentials and after a successful login, the modem might still spit the error, okay? And the reason, it's not overly shocking. Bell techs in and around the GTA have been instructed to tell customers to just leave it for a little bit and it will eventually connect. But why? Bell? I've warned you about this for years. Even my very first Bell video, I warned you about this. Congratulations. You have officially ran out of IPv4 addresses. And my understanding is that the account will authenticate, but then there's just no IP address. <laughs> so, but then as the end user, the question becomes, well, why wait? Why am I waiting? How is it just gonna magically reconnect? Because when another user drops off either from physically disconnecting their hardware or a power outage, or even Bell doing some maintenance outside of their residence, the customer who disconnected ends up giving up their IP address. So my understanding is that's not like Ontario wide. I believe it's in sections. I'm far from a network engineer, but I think it's like certain neighborhoods, like they're just set up, like each neighborhood gets like a pool of IP addresses from what's left anyway. But anyway, they disconnect and then guess what? You end up back online and then they could end up offline when they eventually re reconnect their physical hardware, or they might look out and get an IP address. <laughs> this is a very, very simplistic answer to something that's probably way more complicated, but this is that's kind of the running theory at the moment. But TLDR, it's actual internet whack-a-mole to get an IP address on Bell Residential Services at the moment. This could have been mitigated with static IPs, but guess what? You can't get a static IP on residential services through Bell. And even then, there's only a limited amount of IPv4 addresses anyway. Now they could go IPv6 and this will get people back on the internet, well, mostly, as there are essentially infinite IPv6 addresses, but that may or may not solve everything, okay? Most sites and customers are gonna support like IPv6, okay? Like most devices, most websites, but the problem is some older websites and IoT, Internet of Thing devices, they may still rely on having an IPv4. So that's still a problem. But at the very least, you can mostly get back online if you're using IPv6 strictly, just with some limitations with some sites failing to connect and some older devices no longer functioning. I can probably see Bell rolling this new Gigahub 2.0 with some form of IPv6 and knowing their need for control, they'll actually say it can only be done with the Gigahub 2.0, which is completely a lie. Okay, I'm speculating wild here, by the way. Look, Virgin has native IPv6. And if you didn't know, Virgin is, is it's Bell Internet, okay? It's just a different, it's their sub-brand, okay? But Virgin does have native IPv6, but they're using a rebadged version of this thing that they call Vincent, which is a home hub 4000. So is IPv6 going to alleviate a lot of these error 2000 messages? Well, maybe. Is it gonna solve the bigger issue of connectivity? Not entirely. The issue that I'm seeing is that if Bell just adopted IPv6, by the way, this is total speculation, but let's just say that Bell adopted IPv6 back when Rogers did, or even a little bit before then. Being a massive conglomerate that is a big supplier of internet service, the landscape of the IPv6 adoption, it could have been drastically different today. More devices, more websites may have already made that change if Bell, as like one of Canada's largest internet providers, had just jumped on board back then. I know that Ebox users, and by the way, if you don't know Ebox, it's basically another brand that Bell acquired and they also serve fiber to the home. And it's done through the same lines. So if you're in Ontario and you have access to fiber to the home, you probably have access to Ebox. So for competitive pricing, you might want to check them out. But anyway, Ebox uses PPPoE for IPv4. And what we learned in the last video about PPPoE, it has such a big overhead. That's why you need to use network address translation acceleration or NAT acceleration as it's called on ASUS or hardware NAT as it's called in Unify. But for IPv6, they use DHCP, which doesn't have this issue. So you don't need the hardware NAT. It solves the headroom issues. Well, 
it solves it for IPv6 anyway. Some users like this one from digitalhome.ca noticed IPv6 being natively supported on Rogers in September of 2013. Okay, so over 11 years? Awesome, okay. Instead, we're in this segmented mess and now Bell is starting to pay for it. Does the GigaHub 2.0 excite me personally? No. If it offers IPv6 and the idea of skipping network address translation for a lot of things like say Xbox, for example, then it might excite me a little bit, but I'm not gonna force myself into using Bell's antiquated equipment. And I don't care how new this thing is, it is still antiquated equipment. And if we can either get IPv6 to the HomePub 4000 and the GigaHub and maintain the bypass that we're doing, that's even better. In terms of when all of this is coming, look, I got no idea. IPv6 is really just the question mark at best at this point. But now that this is leaked, I can say this, that I've had five people show me, two in person, that it does exist. And they were getting IPv6 public addresses to it. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you where I saw it for fairly obvious reasons, but I'll say this, that it does look pretty promising. So now I ask, what are your thoughts on this? Would you upgrade your Bell equipment, like say a HomeHub 4000 or a GigaHub to this new GigaHub 2.0? Like, would you do that for Wi-Fi 7 maybe? Would you skip it? And if you're bypassed like I am, would you risk the bypass to try this? And speaking of the bypass, if you have the ability to order three gigabit or higher on Bell or want to attempt the bypass at your own risk, of course, Click on the video right here where I walk through how I did it using a unified cloud gateway fiber. My name is Sean. This has been Tech Mixer and I'm out. Peace.